I'm going one of these mornings to a land with never a night. Oh, yes, I'm going one of these mornings where a robe of spotless white. One of these mornings I'll be flying high. One of these mornings I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going one of these mornings to a land with never a night. Oh, yes, I'm going one of these mornings where a robe of spotless white. One of these mornings I'll be flying high. They mentioned me that I said we we're going to do Ricky Hall this morning, but uh, I, I have a song of Ricky's, but it, it, it's a whole song, and uh, it, uh, by the time the scene changes, we've only got a half a verse, so I'm going to cut it to where we get a good, a good portion of what Ricky's doing. But it is good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be here. It's, uh, we've been hanging in there and, and getting through the heat and the the hailstorms and the and the thunderstorms and it's pretty awesome and and it's uh it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Um, announcements: We do have our prayer warriors are meeting on Tuesday, continuing to study the Book of Hebrews, and uh, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna be in the process of celebrating birthdays the next two weeks. Uh, so uh, uh, I think we're doing hot dogs this week with ice cream, and then. Uh, Next week we're going out to eat. So here comes my here comes my little girl. She's coming up here. There's no doubt. Come here. She's checking it all out. You can see the fashion statements. Come here. Say hi. Hi. Say Jesus loves you. <laughs> Just be careful. All right. So it is good, and we're gonna be uh, we're having a good time. But we do have our prayer prayer warriors are meeting. We have uh, we're studying the book of Hebrews, and also are gonna have hot dogs this this week. Uh, also with with the um, with the the segue or the the opening is that we are selling tickets for the Crespin concert, which is, uh, which is on August the 13th, uh, right out here in our pavilion. Uh, tickets going to be $25, and uh, the VIP experience will be 50 And with the VIP experience, you get a, a free CD. Well, I say free CD. It's part of the package. And uh, you get a, a reception down here in the fellowship hall before the concert. You get to sit. We're going to take our cushioned seats out there and, and put them in the pavilion and have uh, have fans going. And uh, we'll make sure and have bottled water, cold water right at your seat. So uh, so it's as pleasant of experience as you can. Um, but those are coming. I've, we've already started getting, I know it's it's a little bit of ways, but we're already starting to get uh, tickets. We've sold some VIP tickets and some regular tickets, and it's good for our members. Um, if you get if you get rid of a book of tickets, then uh, then your your ticket is taken care of. So uh, that's something that uh, we want to make sure, because some were like, okay, I, I can I can get I can sell some tickets, or someone's like, I just want to get the I'll just get the tickets. Uh, but but the the Crestmen are one of the one of the premier groups in our area. Uh, they're more they're a regional group. But they're 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 quality. And then Ricky Hall is the tenor off of the Cressman, who is starting out on his solo career. Um, so it is uh, it is pretty pretty amazing, and and it's going to be some good music, good time. And that's going to be August the thirteenth, uh, right here. I think it's, I think we have it at six o'clock, is what the what the what it is. So and and all the all the proceeds will go to help fix stuff in our on our on our building. Uh, as you can see, we have. Uh, the, the leak right there, we're, we got to get fixed. It, the tile was completely hanging down. Brother Wayne took care of that this morning, so it didn't, we didn't kill anybody. And I have to do a funeral, and then, uh, <laughs> and then uh, there's some roof issues. There's some HVAC issues and boiler issues, and uh, so we're we're uh, doing we're using this as a fundraiser. So praise the Lord for the the ability to be able to do those kind of things. 
God has blessed us with the facility to be able to do those kind of things. Uh, so do we have any praises, prayer requests? Uh, we do want to, uh, uh, there was an unspoken prayer request that was brought to our attention last week that we were making sure we we're praying for. Um, also, there is a, <laughs> there's another unspoken prayer request that was, was a really serious one. So just, uh, there's two different ones that, uh, that we're praying for there. Um, so just to start off with that, and then anybody have any praises, prayer requests, testimonies? Yes, ma'am. Mom. Okay, the unknown lady at McDonald's. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, what kind and what name? <laughs> hey, Kenna, what's a leopard gecko? <laughs> yep, cool. Does it have a name? Uh, Ike. Ike. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> High schools are crazy. And they get pulled from parents, they get pulled from administration, and they get pulled from Richmond. So they're kind of in the middle of the tug of war. So praise the Lord, and, and we'll be praying for protection there. Yes, sir. Okay. We've been praying for Larry, and, and he's uh, he's hopefully going home Tuesday. So we're praying for him and Diana. Um, yeah, so that's, and uh, just to tag on uh, Roseanne's praise, uh, I, I saw a post where she was like, she wants to, she wants to be able to inspire people like her librarian inspires. And that's always, that's always good to see that, that uh, how much uh, influence and, and how many, how many lives that, that can be touched. Not just by teachers, but by but by every staff member at a at a school system. So that that was that was touching. Anything else? Yes, sir. Oh man. Okay. Pray for FB. He's uh, he said he's having open heart surgery. So uh, be prayers for him and his family. And all right. Well, let's go to the Lord. Well, I also pray for the, I mean, the, the storms that came through. There was hail. I don't know how much damage there was, there was done here. Uh, we're supposed to get some more thunderstorms today. Uh, just, just be in prayer. Um, yeah. Um, the for thank for a thank you for your prayers with the situation that I was speaking at the board of supervisors. It was, uh, it was uh, taken extremely well. Um, and at the uh, school board meeting, uh, I was able to address uh, those concerns uh, privately with the superintendent, with the chairman, and uh, our chairperson, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But uh, it was, uh, uh, I felt like the Lord on, at the school board just felt that I needed to do it privately, privately and respectfully, and, and that was well received as well. So that's... Uh, so that thank you for your prayers there, and, and uh, that that God was in it, because I got a chance not only to to deliver a, a speech, but to be able to talk directly with the sheriff, and and and, con and concerns and, and whatnot. So that was that was just a, it was just a good week. Um, it was really positive. It was a positive week that really could have turned negative. So so thank you for your prayers for there. Um, Anything, any other, Ms. June, we got any prayer requests or praises? We're just, that's what, that's the spot we're hitting on now. I got your unspoken prayer request. Good. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer and then we'll get going. Your grace, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have done and that you are doing. And Father, we just want to lift you up. We want to praise you. We want to honor you. 
And Father, for those that we lifted up in our prayers today, I pray that you would just continue to, to watch over us, to, to, to lift us up those several unspoken prayer requests um, that, were, that, were, that were given. Uh, we're praying for those specifically, the praise for Roseanne's uh, uh, dream job. We just pray that you would, that a hedge of protection would be around her and that she would uh, be able to uh, discharge her duties and influence kids like she was influenced in, in, in school. So praise the Lord there. Uh, we're, we're praying for the, the fundraiser, for repairs on the building, for those that are dealing with uh, illness. Father, we're just so thankful that Larry will be able a chance to get home on Tuesday. We pray that there's no complications and that that happens. We're praying for Diana and and, and his fam and their family. Uh, praying for F.B. Phillips who's going through open, open heart surgery. Uh, so, Father, and, and for all those that I may not always remember, the the, la the young lady at uh, McDonald's, uh, we don't know the situation, don't even know her name, but you do, and we're lifting we're lifting her up today, Lord. Father, we're so thankful for what you're doing and what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, amen. amen. We're going to open up uh, today at hymn number 329. We're going to sing the first and last verses, and then we're going to go right into 330. I hope that works, because they have a little thing that says we can go into 330. And we'll sing the first verse of 330. And, and I'm saying that, and I'm looking at Rosemary. Does that work? Okay. Two the first one, and one the last one the second. All right, stand if you're able as we sing. There's power in the bud, first and fourth, or first and last. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Last verse. Would you do service for Jesus your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you give daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. <coughs> power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood. Uh, 3.30. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His graces now? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Thank you so much. You may be seated. All right. How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing okay? Uh, we're so thankful for those that are, are tuning in online. And uh, with all the start, starting with the... Uh, the music, I kind of didn't get a chance to, to touch base with our online folks, but we are, we're so appreciative of that, and, and so make sure you say hi in the comments, and I'll be able to jet back down there at the end and check everything out. If you have any prayer requests, uh, drop them in the comments, or you can just say prayer, and I can, I can find you online, and we pray with you. Uh, if you're in, interested in getting tickets to go to the concert, just type tickets in the, in the comments, and we'll figure it out, and and how to get those to you, but uh, we're so thankful for you. We don't ever want to you to think that it's that it's any less because you're not actually here that you're that you're just viewing online because it's not that way. 
Uh, we want to be one body, one, one, with one voice, with one spirit, one baptism, all that stuff in Ephesians. Uh, so, so praise the Lord for you. And, and uh, it's, it's funny because I was telling my wife this morning, I was like, I didn't feel real motivated this morning. I was sitting there drinking a cup of coffee, and I had done a lot of the, the groundwork today, yesterday, so I didn't have to be here super early to, to do everything, and, and so it was, getting clo- it was getting later and later, and I was like, I don't, have any very, I don't have very good motivation today, and she's like, well, what are you preaching on? I said, the church of Laodicea. <laughs> and the funny thing about it, though, is it was true. It wasn't a whole lot of motivation this morning. But uh, we are going to preach on the church of Laodicea, and, and we're not going to preach on all the churches right now, uh, just because as, as I was studying for asking God what to what to preach this this week. Um, usually, you know how we've been doing series and series and series, and and uh, I just just felt like in this time that just hey, what do you want me to preach? And uh, and God can speak through series as we prep. Uh, but I, God can also just give a word, and and while I was while I was asking and studying, I had three different posts and 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 two different devotionals that talked about being lukewarm, and four out of the four out of the five or five out of the six, whatever number it was, gave a really bad interpretation of it. It was it was not very good. And uh, so, so I started looking at it, and, and 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 God started piecing it together. You got a little bit on how my mind works last week, and how it kind of bounced around, and um, and uh, this kind of this kind of hit me. So, this is where I believe God wants us to be today. We're going to be in Revelation chapter three, verses fourteen through twenty-two. And one of my pet peeves is uh, just get this out: is that is is the book of Revelation. It's not the book of Revelations. This is the revelation of Jesus Christ given by God to Jesus, which is pretty amazing there. And that's the first verse of Revelation. Um, but we are. this is the last of the churches, of the seven churches that, that, that uh, John was writing the letter to. And, uh, and it's the church at Laodicea. And, and, and it says this. Starting in verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy me of gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with the eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcome, overcame and am set down at, with my father in his throne. And he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Your gracious Heavenly Father, we, we thank you. We pray that you bless the reading of your word. Father, we know that your, any, any part of your word is good. We can just open it up and put our finger there and start reading and it's all good. So, Father, I pray that you would take this specific scripture today and impress upon our hearts the message that you want. Allow me to get out of the way and and let those words come from you. And, Father, let not your sheep hear my words, 
but also that still small voice that goes behind the sermon. Because it is in that still small voice that we have power. Father, Holy Spirit, witness to our spirit and teach us all truth. Father, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right. So the book of Revelation, especially these letters to the churches, they can be taken, they can be looked at three different ways. They can be looked at practically because there was actually a church that an actual letter was written to. It can be taken prophetically. It can be talking about the church in a later time, the stages of the church. And in Laodicea, we're probably looking at about from 1900 to now, till Christ comes back. And then it can also have a personal application as well. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So if we're going to understand this particular church letter, we need to know a little bit about Laodicea. Um, it was a city founded 253 B.C. by Antiochus, Antiochus II, was named after his wife, Laodice. The city is located high on a plateau, so it's very good for defense. But there was one glaring problem. They didn't have a water source. They had to pump water in from through aqueducts from 10 miles away, 6 miles away. So by the time the hot springs came, it was not hot anymore. And by the time the cold springs came, it was not cold anymore. Laodicea was destroyed by an earthquake in 61 AD. The city was so wealthy and so self-sufficient that they rebuilt their city with their own resources. So it shows you the city was famous for its finances. It was a center of banking known throughout the Roman Empire. It was known for its fashion. Soft black wool was produced there, and the wool was considered a luxury item in the day. Laodicea it was the center of fashion. So if you were talking about Fashion Week, it would go to Laodicea. The newest styles appeared there. And then they were famous for their pharmaceuticals. They had a salve that was really cool. And they had a, a tablet that they would uh, mix with water and it would produce a paste. And it was rubbed with the eyes. It was supposed to clear up a ton of eye problems. And so that's what uh, Laodicea was kind of known for. But spiritually, Jesus basically said, you make me sick, Laodicea. So we're going to look at that and we're going to see maybe there's a word for our church or the church of today in this letter. Maybe it's a word for our Christians today in this letter. So let's look at it. Let's look at some of the problems in Laodicea where we talk about ownership, possession was a problem. And I want you to check me on this. You don't have to go there now, but if you would like to, we're going to talk about the, the introduction to each of the letters. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And it goes, unto the, church, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Unto the angel of the church in Smyrna. Unto the angel of the church in Pergamos. Unto the angel of the church in Thyatira. Unto the angel of the church in Sardis. And unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia. You saw some themes going on there. You hear, you hear the church of or the church in the city name. But then there's the church in Laodicea. And unto the church, unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans. 
This was a church dominated by people and not a church owned by God. That was a problem. It was their church, not God's church. It's a church that pleased them and not God. Not considering the will of the Lord. We must never forget that the church exists to glorify God and not ourselves. It's not a platform for me to get famous. Lord knows that's not going to happen. It's not for us to get a great name around the ground so everybody would just think, oh, the church is just so beautiful. And it's no. The church is here to give glory to God. And that's, it's a, the church is here to play their part, our part, in the kingdom. And it's not the kingdom to play a part in our church. We've gotten that mixed up throughout the, the modern times. It's about our church. If it's not going to benefit our church, then why are we involved in it? I remember when I first started pastoring here, I said this statement. I wasn't called to pastor any other church but this church. And I missed a lot of opportunities there. And God has, God has grown my knowledge and, and, and grown me as a pastor to realize that it's not just about our church. We need to, we don't need anyone like in first, like in 3 John 9 trying to keep the church and the ministry centered on him. We see that today, right? I mean, we don't, Lord forbid, we don't want to go to Michael Heavener Ministries. Ew. But we, we do see named preachers that are famous that are running their own ministries. And that's not what the Lord intended. Any, any ministry that's not grounded in the church is a business and not a ministry. It might be a Christ-centered business, but ministry happens through the church. They had a problem of ownership here because in Laodicea, the people were the dominant force and they were not seeking the will of God. They had a, they had a problem of passion because they were apathetic. That sound like today? <laughs> Did that to one of my pastor friends. That's, what, that's his thing. It's like, is that today? Amen? And then he'll just hold his hold up his ear. So there's my tribute to Ray. Uh, you remember that water I, I spoke of? And here's where a lot of, a lot of pastors, and including myself in, in years past, I've preached this. They were luke, it was lukewarm water. And this is, I wish you would be hot or cold. Right? And we think hot being on fire for God and cold just com being completely away from God. But that's not what this is talking about. We're here to correct some things here. Hot water was useful. Cold water was also useful. Hot water was used to purify. Luke, I mean, cold water was used to refresh. So he's saying, Jesus said, I wish you were useful, church. Because you're not, you're apathetic, you're lukewarm, you're not useful. You're useful for nothing, because lukewarm water is just that. They lost their passion for the things of the Lord. They become indifferent. They had reached a place where they were going through the motions. They weren't moved with compassion. To 
Doesn't this sound like the modern church today? Going through the motion, but there's no burning passion for the things of God. You hear things happen and, and we say, well, that's terrible. They just need to get saved. Yet we don't witness. Yet we don't pray. Because ultimately we don't care. The average church in our day is a study in apathy. They're not exactly dead. Because there is preaching and praying and singing and kind of stuff. But they're not exactly on fire either. There's no excitement or passion. People enter the church and they say, bless me if you can. And if not, we'll try again next week. They never feel that unction to do something. How can you hear about Jesus, his love, his death, and all he's done for you and remain unmoved? The cross doesn't move anybody anymore. I say anybody. Now I'm not talking about individually because there's some individuals. But as the church as a whole, it's not just the preaching of the cross. You've got to have lights and cameras and motions and videos and awesome music. And you've got to set the stage and you've got to set the mood. It's not like and they just got up in the early church and just read the sermon. Sinners in the hands of an angry God is still the most powerful sermon I've ever read. And he just got up, opened it, and read it. And the power was in the word of God. Now is got to have this strategy to get people's attention and that strategy to get people's attention. I'm not saying that we shouldn't get better at delivering and get better at doing things. But if that's the focus, then we've missed the mark. I don't certainly expect anybody to re respond exactly like I do or exactly like somebody else. But there should be some, some evidence of life. And that may manifest differently. For those that have been through the wars and they're on, their, on the twilight, in the twilight of their lives, that may manifest itself more in prayer and giving. For those that are just starting out, that, that may manifest itself in action. Not really knowing what to do, but I'm going to do something. And if I'm going to run into the wall, I'm going to run into it full steam ahead. Because there's going to be a big mic sized hole right there. <laughs> and if you see me going in the wrong direction, let me know. Because I will be full steam ahead. I love Vance Havner. He said, I'm heaven bound with the hammer down. That's right. I had people ask me when I, it's been, so, it's been years, so, well, can I do this in the church? Just do it. Well, what about this? And that? Just do it. We'll ask, if it's wrong, we'll ask for forgiveness and we'll keep moving. But it's, it's harder. It's easier when somebody wants to do something to say do it. It's harder to say wait. We got to get this permission and this permission and this permission and this permission and vote four times. By that time, their passion is like, well, heck with this. I'll go somewhere else. Or just do it. And can I go out and just hand out tracks at the, at the food line? Yeah, do it. No, here's some tracks. I'll go with you. But an apathetic church is hard. It's hard to pastor. It's hard to move. It's hard to... It's hard because generally 
the folks in an apathetic church are saved. They're saved. So it's not so much about, hey, you need to get, you need to get right with God or you're going to hell. It's about we need to do for God. We need to yield to God so that we have our works so that when we lay them at the feet of Jesus, they're, they're refined as fine jewels instead of a wooden stubble burned up or not any at all. We need to let our we need to be working for the Lord. And you see, no, that's a bad word in Baptist churches, but we are supposed to work for God. Not to get saved, but because we are saved. Because my Bible says, Lo, let your light shine among men, so that others will see your good what? Works, and then they will glorify who? God the Father, your Father which is in heaven. So we're supposed to do that. And in James it talks about faith without works is dead. That's a hard type of church to be involved in. Because sometimes that church misrepresents God. Jesus was a man of passion. His, do, his, his, his disciples were certainly passionate men. And sometimes when they see when others see our indifference, they think, well, well, that must be what Jesus was like. Because if they claim to follow him and they don't care, then does Jesus really care? Is that what he's all about? There's also a problem of perception. It's a good Baptist sermon. Perception. Because what they thought they were, they weren't. They thought they were rich. They thought they needed nothing. They thought they were doing it right. Well, we got it all taken care of, God. You don't need to, don't need to worry about this church because we got it. We got it going on. We we preach from the King James Bible. We we sing the hymns. We even throw in some new songs, so we're not that old fogey church. We got the electronics going on. We got it. We have tracks. We pray. We even eat. Amen. We click all the boxes. We give. We give the missions. We give our tithes and offerings. We got it, God. Go look at somebody else. We got it. That was the church of Laodicea. They had it all. They perceived themselves as wealthy, and they were wealthy in the world sense. Powerful in the world sense. But then they got their report card. And what did it say that Jesus said? I'm going back here to the verses. They didn't know that they were what? And knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind, and naked. You thought you had it all, but really you got nothing. There's nothing that you're doing that's I'm pleased with. Nothing. How hard is that for a church to say that you're doing nothing that pleases Jesus? That going. Maybe something. You might pray at least once. You might at least get one person saved. Nothing. Man. But yet they thought they were doing good. Well, just a little newsflash as you, as you read through that. 
every way that the church thought they were doing, they were doing the opposite throughout the scripture. But I don't know. You would think you would do something good. But Jesus didn't have one good thing to say about the church at Laodicea. And that is the church age in which we live in. There was a church at Laodicea that was run by the Laodiceans. And then in prophetic, there were there is a church age called the Laodicean age of the church. Now I mentioned it was probably up around 1900 to when Jesus comes. Probably mixed in there with probably a little bit of Philadelphia, where it was it was the good church. Almost like in this last age, you got the good church and the bad church. There is no in between. Come on now. You got the church that's doing it right, and you got the church that's not. How do you fix it? Well, one, do you notice? That Jesus didn't say leave. Leave that Laodicean church. Go to a church that's alive. They go with old sayings. Says, Let's go find the perfect church, but don't join it because then it won't be perfect anymore. Go to church, get involved. Go to church, what can I do? How can I serve? How can I be a part of the solution rather than perpetuating the problem. Man, wouldn't that be, if that was the motive of, of our folks today, in anything, in the school system, in, in politics, in, in church, how can I be part of the solution rather than perpetuating the problem? Man, that would, that would change a few things. But what happens? What, what was Jesus's, what was his, what was his solution? He comes. He's coming to them as the amen. So be it. Let it be so. Even so. He's coming to him, them as the faithful and true witness. He's coming. He is the confronting one. He's coming as the beginning of the creation of God. He's coming as the all controlling one. So he's coming as the amen, confirming their lostness or their apathetic apathy. He's coming as the faithful and true witness, the confronting one. And he's coming as the creation, the beginning of the creation of God. The all-controlling one. That's him. That's Jesus. It would do us well to remember that Jesus is not just the baby in a manger we talk about on Christmas. And he's not just the Messiah that died on the cross for us. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And one day he's coming back. He's the one that knows us better than ourselves. He's the one that's in control in, in spite of what people It is the Lord's desire for the church that they would be cold or hot. It's the Lord's desire for this church that we be useful. Be cold or hot. The church was proud of their achievements, yet they were wretched and poor and miserable and begging and useless. But then, Jesus said, repent. He said, because I chasten my own. And he's saying, repent. We just studied that in Hebrews where he chastens his own. The chastening and the chastisement as children rather than bastards. Because even as bad as the church was, 
They were his children in that church. And then Jesus says this. I stand at the door and knock. And that get into the etymology and the words, because I'm continually knocking. And if you remember, do you remember the, the famous picture where Jesus is standing at the door and he's holding a lantern or something and he's knocking and that the door doesn't have a, a doorknob or a handle on the outside? He says, Behold, I stand at the door now. He never gives up his efforts. He isn't long-suffering towards us. But then he said, if any man or any person would hear my voice and open the door. Jesus is on the outside of the church knocking. And if an individual would hear him and open the door, that he would sup with him. And he, and he with me. In the ancient Greeks, they had they celebrated three meals. They usually had a huge breakfast. They usually had a light lunch. And they had a laid-back supper where that, that was the time to fellowship and, and to get intimate with one another and to know. And to, He said, if anybody opens the door, I will come in and sup with him, sup with them individually. If you would just open the door, I will come in and have fellowship with you. You can be a member of a dead church, a dry church, but you don't have to be that way yourself. If you will open the door, you can have revival in your life. And it only takes a spark. God can bring, if you're sitting in a church where the pastor is telling stories rather than scripture, where he's given his feelings rather than the word of God, where they're more, they're more concerned about being politically correct rather than biblically correct. It doesn't say leave. It says, open the door yourself to Christ. And he will fellowship with you. And revival can start in your heart. Revival can start when it affects you. And then your friend sitting over there on the, on the pew beside you in, in ABC Dead Church. He can look over at you and say, what's different about you? Well, let me tell you. Jesus said he's standing at the door and knocking. You open the door. Fellowship. It's great. Now you got two. And then they get on the phone trees. Hey, Charlotte. Come on. I got something to show you. Next thing you know, it's four. And eight. And next thing you know, the pastor's looking out and it's like, I got a new church here. What's up with that? And then he gets convicted. Because he's seeing revival and he's not feeling it. Because he's been dead. We need pastors to experience revival. Because like it or lump it, believe it or don't believe it, Churches take on the personality of the pastors, of the leadership. And if the pastor is preaching the word of God and he's on fire, then generally the church is. Generally. But there are a lot of times where you have dead preaching and it's up to the people, the congregation. 
That's why you have a responsibility when you come to church to be involved. To be an active participant. Because if I'm getting up here and you realize that I'm not preaching the Bible and I'm just giving my opinions, and, and then, then I'm not doing my job. But that we can counsel and we can do those things. You can open the door for yourself and Jesus will come and sup with you until we get the pulpit right. And that's for here. That's for any church that anybody goes to. That's for any radio ministry, TV ministry that you listen to. Because a lot of times you get about 90% truth and about 5% wacko. I mean, I've listened to a ton. And it's like, okay, about 90% I agree with. But it's this other 10% that's just crazy. But I'm telling you, in the day and age we live in, there are more Laodicean churches than Philadelphia churches. There are more Laodicean Christians than Philadelphia Christians. So the choice is yours, and the choice is clear. Jesus is standing at the door and knocking. Are you going to let him in? Are you going to open the door? Because he could, but he will not kick down the door. Will you open the door? Let's pray real quick. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for everything that you have done and that you are doing. And Father, it is my prayer that you would just continue to, to watch over us, to make sure that we're headed in the right direction, make sure that we're, you're, we're, we're following your leadership, that we're living a life that is pleasing to you. Father, I am so thankful that you are long-suffering towards us not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. And Father, I am so thankful for the privilege to do what I do. For the privilege of being a citizen of the king, of the kingdom. Father, we love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray and all God's people said, amen. I got a song that we want to do at the end. But I'm drawing a blank on it. <laughs> time after time we have wasted it. Now that it ended again. Why won't you let him come in? So help me out there, music people. Jesus is waiting. Miss Jude. Nice. There's our choir director. Bam! Jesus is waiting. Somebody find it for me. No! Hey Siri, what's the hymn, Jesus is Waiting? Maybe. It is. The Savior is waiting. How about that one? Yeah, you have to wait there, Hunter. We got you. 483. Pray, pray, pray that this is right.
Bam! Nice. 483. Yep, stand if you're able. 483. We're singing all the verses with this one. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. Oh, how to answer to him. Verse 2, if you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his heart open Now he is waiting again. See if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come. Brother Wayne's going to finish this up with prayer. Our gracious Father, we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the message this morning. And Lord, we pray that. It will not just end here, but that our lives, Lord, will reflect Jesus Christ as we go forward. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Probably not here yet. I hope that's good. Hey, it's good to see you guys. It's, I want to come down here because I wanted to make sure that I got... Uh, let me make sure I get, I'm all leaning out here. Got the comments here. So I just want to take, we got Sue, and you're so thankful. We forgot to pray from, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I got gotcha. you. We didn't forget. Yep, let me. Uh, Lucy Kale, okay, we're definitely praying for her. Yes. Yes, okay. Lucy, we're definitely praying for Lucy, and, and we're so thankful that everybody comes, and everybody is good, and uh, I'll check everybody out after the service, but it's so thankful that you guys have come with us, and uh, if you again, reach out to me if you have prayer requests. God bless you guys.